stand and cast a wishful eye to kingdoms fair and happy land where my possessions lie. I am bound for the promised land. I'm bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come and go with me? I am bound for the promised land. Oh, oh the transporting rapture scene that rises to my sight. Sweet fields of raving, living green, and rivers of delight. I am bound for the promised land, I am bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come and go with me, I am bound for the promised land. Filled with delight, my raptured soul would hear no longer stay.
start off with the Tis the Season, so if anybody has a favorite hymn that they would like to sing, as it's our custom during Advent, you have a chance to sing one of your favorites. So does somebody have to and choose either the red or the black hymn? You would warm up with just one verse of, uh, of something to sort of light the mood and start the season off right. 127 black. 127 in the black hymnal we have from the high heavens. 127. 127. Just to warm up our voices as we warm up our hands. <laughs>
soil. It is the first handwritten, hand illuminated Bible in 500 years. The college was one of very, very few copies of this text, and we'll be reading from it today. And after church, and during church time, if you would like to come and uh, enjoy the beautiful contemporary art that is scattered all the way through, you're very welcome to do so. I ask you this. If, let me turn the pages, or Maggie, she will stand at the end of service. She and I will stand beside each Bible. And we'll turn the pages so that you can see some things. Uh, but that will just ensure that uh, extra fingers don't accidentally cause any damage to these valuable books. We want you to see everything, uh, and we'll turn the pages for you. But we have the Gospels today, and we have the Book of the Prophets with us today. The book is in seven volumes. Uh, each is illuminated with 24 karat gold and solid platinum, uh, as well as incredible colors and a calligraphy as well. So we'll be reading from them today thanks to the Campus Christian Center's generosity. Right after church today will be our annual budget meeting. Yay! <laughs> I don't give the enthusiasm I was hoping for. <laughs> budget meetings are important, people. Budget meetings are the way that we put our faith into our values. It is a wonderful time. It's a part and parcel of our faith. And I have some good news to share. This last Tuesday was Giving Tuesday, and thank you, thank you, thank you. We raised over $6,000 on that one day.
found someone who was helping bring hope to this world. There is a wonderful project called La Manta de Curación, which is the healing quilt in Spanish. Uh, this is, was started by a group of Oaxacan women in Oaxaca, Mexico. In protest of violence against women and children, they have they sent cloth out to all the women of the village, and now it is spreading worldwide. They have put together a quilt that they intend to walk through Mexico. They will then throw it over the border wall, where it will be picked up by women and children on this side and paraded through the country as a sense of healing. We take the pieces, we take little torn pieces, and stitch them together. This is the work of hope, and so we light this candle today for all the women who help make the Manta de Corazón part and parcel of our work. I invite you to have hope this day. I invite you to carry hope, not the false kind, but the deep kind, the kind.
with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and fattening together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw by the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole in the ass, and the weaned child shall put his hand in the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a sign, as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious.
so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony and with one another in accordance with Jesus Christ, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome, my mother, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you through the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles, and sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, in his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let the peoples praise him. And again Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall have hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. We have many who help us abound in hope, but we invite our youngest and brightest ministers to come forward. We'll meet right up here by the big old Bible. Come join me at the front. We'll talk a little bit about what it means to have hope. Exactly right. The 
kind of hope that Paul writes about in this letter that he wrote to a church a lot like this one a long time ago was, you know what? From God we get the right kind of hope. We don't get the hope that says, oh yeah, just slap off and do nothing and it'll, maybe it'll work out. That's not hope. Right? Right? God gives us the hope that says, I'm working with you. I am working with you. you got to do your homework, but I'm working with you. I will help you. I will be with you. And together, we hope it will be. I want you to be doing your homework. Now, it doesn't have to be math. It doesn't have to be English or algebra or any of that. I want you to be doing your heart homework, right? you got to do your heart homework, too. you gotta, you got to love. you want to be loving? you got to. you got to do your homework, right? you got to act on it. you got to try it. You gotta see. You gotta. You gotta practice. You gotta practice. That's hope. Practicing what you want to see in the world. That's what real hope is. So if you want to see astronauts, if you want to be an astronaut, you gotta practice. You gotta study. You want to be a great musician? You gotta fiddle. You gotta. You gotta strum. You gotta play. You gotta play. You gotta try it. And it's okay if you're not good at the beginning. Hope is about doing your homework so that you get. And I think when we practice together, like when churches come together, when any community comes together and practices good stuff like love, compassion, and, and, and caring, and kindness, God's right there in the midst of us, right there. So, I hope God will be with you. I hope God will be in your hopes. I hope your hopes will be big. Hope big. Big, big, big. And what should we pray for today as we're hoping along? Yeah. Homeless people, we gotta love people who need homes, yeah, we'll pray for them. And lots of animals, yeah, yeah, I was thinking about that too. Yeah, the ones we love and the ones we may never meet, thank God bless them all creation. Making sure that families get together at Christmas, right, absolutely, and have that sense of connection, yeah. Anything else? Those are good hopes, those are good prayers, you guys are the best, all right. You Joyce, the best have led the way, the children have led the way. Let us pray together. Let's pray. Lord, for everybody who doesn't have enough, and for everybody's families that we can all show the love, and for all the animals that we love and that sustain us, and that are just part of your beautiful creation. May nobody hurt or destroy on all of the holy mountains. That's our hope. We promise to do our homework to make it happen. Help us. Be with us. Be with these, your ministers, Lord. Be with these, these fine guys. Praise them and guard them. Now and always in Christ's name. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Even now, the axe is laid at the 
at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than me is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Here ends the good news. Let us pray. Holy One, help us turn. Help us shift. Help us see differently. Help us open hearts and minds by this word and by those who come to us in hope. Bless us as a community that we may be together gathered in such light. But bless us mostly that we may go from here carrying it to a waiting world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. John is essentially the sandpaper in the carpenter's workshop of our faith. If you want something to be smooth, you have to use something a little rough to get it that way, right? Those of you who work the wood know what I speak. When you saw a board and it's full of waves, you don't just sort of wave a Kleenex at it or throw oil on top of it. It takes a lot of elbow grease and it takes abrasion. John is the abrasive precursor to the grace of Christ. He comes out and he sees all the officials, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, these are the ones who are the top dogs in the religious world of the day. He sees them coming out to the Jordan wilderness, seeking this baptism, seeking to find the thing that he is promising, this idea that God will forgive and return to you a sense of your wholeness. And he says, who are you snakes? And why have you come here? Because you are having a problem.
John says what is true, which is if you meet this Jesus in the desert, if you come to meet this God, this God who makes lions to eat hay, then you better be ready to walk a different path. Don't come thinking people are going to like you because you look good in a nice looking church. Don't come because you think if you come here you make some great business connections and then you'll be able to profit better. Don't come because your professor comes here and you think, ooh, I'll get some extra points because they'll see my shiny face on Sunday morning. Don't come here for that. It won't work. John is the sandpaper to your soul. John is telling you, no, you want to be smooth. You want to make the smooth pathway? Well, it takes a lot of rough time. To make a smooth path. And rough talk is this we have to walk somewhere different. We cannot walk the way we can walk. We can't just be on the edge of hope all our lives. We have to be in the hope. We have to be the hope. And what is it? It's what Paul said, right? We have to do our homework. We have to do our heart homework. It's not enough to talk about Christmas if you aren't going to live it. It's not enough to talk about a Jesus who loves everybody if you get to love just a few people. It's not all right to be a follower of God who made all the creation, but you get to use up, tear up, burn parts of creation so that you can be happier by yourself behind some wall of your own construction or that you let somebody else build for you. That's just being on the edge of hope, and we need to be This place, this, this church, every church, is meant to be a place of hope. A place where you know that there is companionship on the journey. Can't probably walk your path. Can't know what turn you have to make. But a church is supposed to be a place where there's a little light on that path. And where there are people who will hold your hand as you go down it. We've not always been good at that. Churches have been centers of hatred. Churches have been centers of misogyny. Churches have been places of racism. Churches have been built on isolation and privilege and separatism. And have been built up to think, oh, well, God must love us best. Let's survey the people here. Do you think we're the best ones here? Well, we do. Yeah. You brood of vipers. You snakes. <laughs> Did you think you were going to get to come to church because you came to this beautiful place and you were not going to hear the actual word that says to you that there is work to be done? Think again. But take hope. Because you are not being asked to do that work without the great love of God Almighty. Love for you if you are trans and in this space. Love for you if you are sick and in this place. Love for you if your body doesn't do what it used to. Love for you if you don't have the job you used to have. Love for you if you never had a job. Love that says a better world is possible and we're going there. Come with us. Come on. I think about the things that give me real hope. It isn't solutions, although those are very handy. Because we don't always get handed solutions to problems. But the things that have often brought me hope in the darkest, darkest times is that baptism of fire in friendship and holy love that has sometimes come with somebody who would just stand next to me while my feet were in it. I didn't get rescued. I didn't get out of my homework. I had to do the hard things. I had to say the hard things. I had to have hard things said to me. But there were people who stood by me and said, all right, all right. In my first church, the first church where I ever really had an opportunity to preach, I was on the south side of Chicago. Um, some of you know that I was at seminary at the University of Chicago, and I was at Lincoln Memorial Congregational United Church of Christ on 63rd and Champlain Street on the south side in Woodlawn. I was the only white member of an all-black church, and I had always only grown up in white churches. And so the first time I preached, I was nervous, and I was terrible. I knew I was terrible. I was awful. I didn't know anything. I had done once, I preached once in my life, and that was a mom's church, and that was, they were, they were nice. <laughs> I was probably 
terrible then, too. So I get up there, and, and I start off, and I start to stumble. The path is not straight. The valleys are not lifted. The mountains do not come down. It is a rocky path. It is a rocky path. And behind me, in the choir, was Joy. And she said, come on, Ken. Come on. Come on. You do better. Come on. And in the front, there were people going, mm -hmm. amen, all right, preach it, mm -hmm. okay, all right, now, mm -hmm. And you know what? I had hope. I had hope. Not because I was any better, because I wasn't, I was terrible. <laughs> but we were together. We were together. We were together, and the Holy Spirit was with us, and we talked about it, and even a terrible sermon can teach you. If nothing else, it serves as a bad example. <laughs> Every life is valuable. Every moment when we are together in a holy purpose is heaven. So snakes of my heart, unite. Come together. This world needs to know that there are people who come from different backgrounds who didn't know each other who are still willing to stand together for that which matters. They need to see that the message of Jesus was not one of isolation and, and, and retribution and favoritism. It was, in fact, a message that said, together, God's love is strong. In a few weeks, we're going to hear Mary say in the Gospel of Luke, my soul magnifies the Lord. And that's what a good community does. It puts a magnifying glass on all the best parts and all the things needed. Outside this building, there are people who do not have hope. They're not sure that there is somebody who would stand with them because they're, they're not, they don't look the same, they're not sure they think the same, they don't know that they believe the same. And I don't think that it is any bit of God's will love this world so much as to enter it with all this pain and to speak a word of joy to this. I cannot be God's will that God's people act snooty, separate, apart, disdainful, hurtful, harmful, hateful, and no, that cannot be it. We are servants. We don't serve each other. We are servants. We are here to lay down our lives for those we don't even know. To spend and be spent in the service of a loving, hopeful gospel that is bigger than any one of us, bigger than our prestige, and bigger, much, much bigger than any of our problems. How do we know the love of God? Because the people of God stand with us and whisper in our ear that love is stronger than hate. And hope is a bird of the wings.
reflection questions in the bulletin or meditating on the poetry, may God be with you. And we pray together that tonight he moves to the bell to bring us in. Let us all bring in our hearts the message that hope is alive.
your love might prevail and the light of compassion and justice and joy shine bright. We pray in the way Jesus taught us when we reach to you as our Maker, Amen. Our and our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we rise to sing our final hymn, know this. This community is a community of hope, and we are willing to stand with and around you if you are on a spiritual journey. So if today is your day and you would like to have this family of faith surround you, either as a member or as an associate, however you would like to do that, we have associate memberships, I invite you to think about joining. I invite you to gather together because this world is very large and our work is very big. And our numbers are very few. Together, we are a mighty, mighty blessing. So if today is your day, come join us. If not, come, come next week. Come every week after. You come, for hope abides. Won't you rise and sing with us? Oh.